Uh, Jen and Jamie, as they say, this cake is almost baked. Whatever the outcome is going to be tomorrow, the ability of the candidates and campaigns to influence or sway that outcome has been diminishing with each passing day and hour. Now, in just a matter of hours, we're going to see some results. Nikki Haley is sticking with the plan, as you saw there in Ariel's report. It's been a whirlwind of retail stops alongside Governor Chris Sununu. She's been pouring bar, uh, beers at bars at a UNH hockey game visit, VFWs stopping in at restaurants, showcasing a kind of regular guy or gal appeal. People are seeing her in their own daily life context rather than in a more controlled campaign setting and the goal is to reach and turn out voters who may not be as completely plugged into politics as someone in the base of the party. Now the front runner, former President Donald Trump, for a year he's relied on the power of his brand and his four years in the White House to act as a fortress. He's held on to his support as other candidates have gone up and down and he only made a handful of campaign visits all year long in 2023. In a rare move for Trump, he's actually kind of changing things up. He's been doing events almost daily, rallies, speeches, even a drop in at his campaign headquarters. You can read this sudden burst of activity in two different ways. One, he might be worried about how close Nikki Haley could get to him here. Or two, he wants to post a dominant number here, a big win like he did in Iowa and try to end the primary contest here in the Granite State. Now, Nikki Haley has already scheduled an event in South Carolina after the primary, so she wants to move on. But Ron DeSantis also wanted to move on after that second place finish in Iowa, and obviously he's no longer in the race. New Hampshire usually narrows the field. That's the way this process works. But to have it down to two at this point is extraordinarily rare. Jamie?